Alright, so I've had a few people who've been interested in uh, learning how I make my stencils in Photoshop, so I thought I'd make a little video tutorial. We're going to be painting Macaulay Culkin here today. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and open up your picture in Photoshop. Uh, you're going to want to take that, that layer, that image, and duplicate it. You just want to have one as a reference in case we need to go back and see what, uh, what we were originally working with. So I like to lock that layer and hide it because we're not going to use that right now. Uh, the very first thing I do is erase all the background stuff we're not going to be using. This picture is pretty easy since it's, a, since it's a white background, but sometimes there's a lot of junk going on and you don't want to see that. I find it's easier if you take another layer, place it underneath the one you're working on, pick some really bright color, and fill the entire layer with it. And this helps you see the area that you've already erased because sometimes that checkered background is difficult to see. So generally I just zoom in. I set my pixels pretty low on the brush and just start tracing away. Some people like to use the magic wand tool. I don't. I think it uh, gives you really undefined edges. You end up with some really weird looking extra stuff um, so I don't use it because I want my results to be sharp but feel free if that's your thing alright so I've gone ahead and uh, erased the entire background as you can see that green is not really there it's just an extra layer to show me uh, that I've got everything the next step is to desaturate this image which is going to be under image adjustments right there just gives you a nice black and white image. Now you're going to want to duplicate that that layer because we're going to need two copies of it. So the layer, duplicate layer. Doesn't matter what you name it. Hide that top one. Make the second one active. Now what we're going to want to do is go to image, adjustments, and threshold. This is going to help us work with uh, the black and white, the contrast in the picture. The first thing we want to do is get an image with quite a lot of black in it. Um, you can accomplish this by using the slider back and forth. And uh, default is 128, and I think I'll probably stick right around there, 132. All right. So now you're going to want to pick a dark color that's within the color scheme of the, the, the picture you're trying to actually paint. So with this one I'm just going to use grays and blacks. So I'll pick a dark gray, go up to select, color range, and change this little drop down to shadows. Now all of that black area should be selected. Hit Shift F5, and that will fill it with your foreground color. And Command D to deselect that. And so that's going to be our midtone. Now you're going to want to go up to that uh, top layer that we have hidden, make it visible. We're going to go to Image Adjustments Threshold one more time. This time we want it to be a lot lighter. Just slide it over this way. Now in this. Uh, in this step, everything that you see that's black will be black in your final image. So if there's some type of detail that you know needs to be there, for example, like uh, you know edges of his nose and eyeball that we want to have black, make sure you don't slide it too far so that you lose those. Now we're going to want to change our foreground color to a lighter shade of the color we were using. So I've got light gray right there. I'm going to select color range. And this time we're going to do highlights. So now all that white stuff should be highlighted. Again, Shift F5, and it'll now fill it with our lighter shade. Command D to deselect that. And go up here and see where it says normal. We're going to change that to multiply. And now you've got your basic three colors separated. And this image doesn't have the greatest definition, but just for the uh, purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to continue going on with it. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is try to fix some of our, our islands by using bridges. 
Islands are little floating pieces that uh, really wouldn't work in a stencil. For example, if we were to cut out all of this black area right here, this little piece in the center would fall through. That's what we call an island. And same thing here in the mouth. So to fix that, we're going to select the paintbrush tool, make sure our color is uh, still on the lighter of the two, make sure we're on that top layer that we're working on, and uh, I'm going to start fixing bridges. I like to zoom in. I'm going to work on that mouth first. What I'm going to do is just find spots where I can erase the black to fix the islands. So, for example, I could do that there, that there, and now this center piece is supported. I'll probably keep going around and just uh, doing more and more. Pieces like this, right here, uh, though there are not islands in, per se, if you plan on using the stencil a lot, um, this would end up being a pretty flimsy area and could get bent or damaged. So I would probably cut right there so that they're two separate elements. Um, I like to leave a lot of this these little pieces, this little grain or grit um, in my pieces and I actually cut them out and paint them because I think it gives a cool detail to it. Some people erase them for a more clean, smooth look. That's up to you. Alright, so I've done a quick and dirty uh, bridge fix on the black layer. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, you always want to make sure that your mid-tone is underneath the areas of the black that you cut out. For example, see right here, or right here, or right here. What that's going to do is help you hide those bridges in the final product. They won't be as obvious as you might think they are right now. So now it's time to work on the mid-tone layer. And rather than using the paintbrush, we're going to be using the eraser tool. Now basically what you want to do here is Erase everything that's covered in black, except for the areas, like I said, that you want to use to hide uh, those bridges. So, what I do is just keep switching from having my black layer on and off to see what I'm actually working with. Make sure you're, that second layer is the one that's highlighted, though, because that's the one we're actually working on. And uh, if you're new to Photoshop and you don't know this, you can actually have that top layer visible and your eraser tool will work on whichever layer is highlighted. So the second layer is highlighted, even though the top one's visible, I can erase, oops, excuse me, click on the wrong one, I can erase underneath using that black as a guide. And you'll see that it's, uh, it's erased the layer underneath. So now I know that I can uh, get rid of this whole area down here. I'll take care of that in a second. But I just keep going through and finding more and more areas. Now, sometimes you'll see that there's a little bit of that mid-tone peeking out in areas like this, and I like to leave that in as much as I can. So what I would do is erase about all of that, but we need to figure out a way to get rid of this whole thing, otherwise we're going to end up with uh, big floppy pieces. So what I would do is just Make it connect just briefly, like here, for example. Now we still maintain that little dark gray edge, and you don't even notice that that part's not there. And just keep going through using the same principles we did for the dark layer to get rid of all of the, uh, the islands and the loose pieces. Uh, but again, make sure you're using the eraser tool this time, not the paintbrush. All right, so I've finished uh, working on that mid layer. This is what it looks like. Uh, so all that gray area is actually what I'll cut out. Um, I had to make a design decision whether or not to create islands and bridges, excuse me, create bridges to fix these islands like the eyeball and like these little spots on his hair. Um, I think if I was to actually paint this one, I would create a fourth layer of just these little highlights that would be the final thing I painted just because I think it would uh, compromise the look of the stencil too much to make bridges, connecting these little dots, all at the same time removing the dots would make Macaulay look
kind of uh, weird, dead in the eyes. So now we've got our black layer, we've got our mid-tone layer, and essentially your base color layer uh, is can just be the combination of these two uh, printed out, and you're just looking at the light areas here. So basically I would uh, just print out this and just cut out this whole head shape. Now, some people, when they do the uh, mid-tone areas, they leave in the colors that are underneath the black. For example, the top of the head right here. They would leave that in because with certain uh, cheaper paints that you buy, you'll actually see um, a difference. You would actually see that border when you painted it underneath the black. Uh, but if you use high quality paints, you won't run into that issue, so don't worry about it. Uh, one of the last things I do, which is pretty much one of the most important things, I think, for multi-layer stencils, is to create registration marks. So what I'm going to do is create another layer. I'll put it on top of everything. And uh, I'm going to make marks that help me line up my individual stencils. I usually do this by uh, just using the marquee tool to make little L's. So you make your little shape and then uh, fill it with black. And then, uh, do the same thing. And uh, you need at least two on uh, different sides of the page, but the more you get, the more accurate. Uh, more accurate your final product will be. So now what you're going to want to do is save your individual layers uh, so that you can take them wherever you want to take them to be printed. Um, so what I would do is just put the black layer, I'll just leave the black layer visible as well as those registration marks that need to be visible on every step from here on out. I'll go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Uh, save as high quality as you can. We'll hide that one. Do the same for this layer. Again, file, save for web and devices. Save it. The final one would be all of them together, and that's the one you would use for your base layer to see the shape of his head. But if I was going to paint this, I would probably print out another copy of this one and use it to make a to cut out the little eye holes and. Uh, highlights on his hair, things like that. So I'd actually, uh, I'd actually be printing out four different things. All right. I forgot to mention that uh, how you're going to use these registration marks when you uh, set up your canvas or the paper that you're painting on or whatever. Um, you're going to want to set a little bit of painter's tape underneath where these areas are, and you should have cut these out when you cut your stencil. And what this will do is help you line up. Uh, all three layers so that they're perfect. So you'd have these cut out, you put some painter's tape underneath, uh, and then when you spray your base layer, you'll want to make sure you spray those spots. Then what happens when you go to set your mid layer down, all you have to do is line up those L's from the mid layer, and you'll be uh, perfectly in alignment, and you won't have any weird looking edges or anything like that. Now, uh, using this exact same technique, uh, I painted this recently, um, and all this is is three different three-layer stencils. Okay, I just separated the elements. So you've got the uh, anemones back here that were one, you know, one stencil, which was three different layers. The orange fish uh, were its own stencil, and I did the the white lines as their own uh, stencil design using the same process. So I ended up with a nine layer stencil to create this, but it came out pretty awesome, I think. I did this one more recently. This was a seven layer stencil. Again, just separated the shark, the body, or excuse me, the shark, the mouth, and the water, and just used the same design process and uh, was able to produce those results. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this, please, uh, Give my Facebook page a like over at facebook.com slash handcutcreations. And uh, thank you very much.